Greetings all, my name is Selena Rosado and welcome to part two of this three-part video series going over the ins and outs of organ maintenance. This section serves as sort of the introduction to on-site maintenance and some of the most common problems we've faced. One of the most important aspects of dealing with on-site maintenance specifically is communication with your technician. Most of us will bill by the hour, so having clear communication can help save you money and help save us time and frustration. I can't count how many times myself or my colleagues have gotten notes that said things like it's broken or the C key doesn't work or the tremolo stop doesn't make sound, you name it. So please, the clearer you can be with your maintenance requests, the better. Even if you don't know the technical terms for a specific maintenance issue, become familiar with how to write out where a specific problem is located and with as basically specific of a description as you can get. Different organ builders communicate keyboard layout in different ways. If you're not 100% sure, one of the safe bets is to use the specific pipe number. For example, when talking about middle C, you were, you'd refer to it as C25. So for example, if you've got a note sticking on but don't really know the terminology, by the way we call it ciphering, but we'll get to that in a second, You'd say C25 on the choir tuba Mirabilis is sticking on when the stop is drawn. That would be extremely helpful for us. Side note, when referring to sharps and flats, organ builders always use sharps. Why this is, I'm not sure. I'll bet there are people that know why this is, but I just don't, but use sharps. Speaking of terminology, let's go over a few basic things. You've got the cipher. the dead note, bleeding, or a sticking key. These are just a couple of the most common things we'll see on maintenance calls and the basic terminology, so just to go over it again. A cipher is when a note or several notes constantly play when they're not supposed to. If they go off but are just sort of delayed, we'll call that a delayed release. Conversely, a dead note is when a note is not playing when it's supposed to. Bleeding is when two or more notes play together when only one note is supposed to be sounding. And a sticking key is a physical key, either manual or a pedal, that is sticking in its on position. So I've taken a reed pipe out of this organ just to show you a little bit of the basic uh, construction of these. So if we take off um, what's called the boot, you can see there's a little hole at the end of this right here, which allows the air to come in. And so if we take off the end of this, um, we see the general um, pipe construction, which causes these reed pipes to speak. So if you look really closely, there's a little metal piece right here. It's usually made out of brass, and this is what's called the reed tongue. And when air comes in, this tongue beats against this portion right here, which is called the shallot face. Um, and you've got your wedge here, you've got your tuning wire, which lives right there, and you've got your scroll. So basically the big thing when it comes to organ maintenance with these reed pipes is reeds need to be kept really, really, really clean. Um, any sort of dirt that comes into contact with either the tongue or the shallot face, or basically sometimes you'll see stuff that ends up in the resonator, like you'll see bugs, bats, um, dirt, dust, like anything, spiders, crickets, we've, we've pretty much seen it all. Um, this will cause these pipes to not speak um, or can damage the tongue. So something else really important to note on these is that a lot of what we call the voicing or the reed voicing um, occurs in this little tongue area here. So if you do find yourself having to work with reeds, be really, really, really careful with the tongue because if you cause any sort of bend in it, um, it can really alter whether or not the pipe speaks, it can alter its voicing, um, and can cause some 
serious damage. So basically with reeds, keep them clean and just be super, super careful with them um, at all times. Okay, so you power on an organ and this happens. Not pressing anything, not pressing any keys. What do you, what do you do about it? Well, a good place to start is to, first of all, find which note is the one that's ciphering. So, as we see, there's no change in the pitch when we press this. So, if you kind of repeat the note a couple times, That may dislodge some of the debris that may have been stuck in the pouch or on top of the pouch or on a valve, because that is usually a common issue, especially in dirtier chambers. So a good kind of no frills way to start with your repair. So it's Sunday morning and you encounter a cipher and you realize that, well, the problem's not in the console, it's in the chamber. If it's one specific pipe, you have a couple options. And again, the big thing is that if you're not comfortable being in a chamber or not exactly sure of where to start or how to go about things, just leave it, shut off the organ. And if the you know repeating key trick doesn't work, that's okay. Call your technician and they would be more than happy to help. But if you are a little bit more comfortable in the chamber, once you've located your pipe, and we've talked a little bit about how to locate exactly which pipe is ciphering, you can proceed accordingly. So say you do your proper shading technique and you notice, well, this is the one that's ciphering right here. Again, not touching the pipes. So basically you have a couple options. Here's your, you know, sort of mouth area. And in general, if you're gonna touch pipe work, always avoid touching this area. Same thing with the immediate toe area because that affects the voicing and the pipe speech. And again, pipe metal is super, super fragile and super flimsy. So just err on the side of caution always. And basically, if you grab it by here, you're usually okay. And just being gentle, you can pick it up and set it either on the toe board or if the walk board is a safe area, just pick it up and set it there. Another option you may have that could work is sometimes I've seen people stick a piece of paper underneath. So there's your toe hole right there. Stick a piece of paper underneath and put the pipe back into its original spot. And that paper will sort of block off any air that tries to enter that. So I've seen that work too, especially for some larger pipes where it doesn't really make sense um, to lay them on the walkboard. So that's sort of your 101 just emergency, it's Sunday morning and it's just not working, repair. And as always, again, call your technician and they'll be happy to assist. And then there's the general tuning factor. I believe it's important that organists have at least some tuning skills and can fix a single pipe. If say it's 10 minutes before the recital or 9.58 a.m. on a Sunday and, you know, D-sharp 28 on a swell trumpet is just way off. So here's the tuning 101. First step is to acquire a tuning knife of some sort. You can find these from several organ suppliers, but if you don't have access to a tuning knife, a longer flathead screwdriver will do, or basically any long flat metal um, surface. In the last video, we briefly went over how to find a specific pipe in the Winchest layout section. So once you find that pipe, proceed accordingly, and only if you feel comfortable and confident. If not, best to leave the pipe work alone and just switch registrations. If you do proceed, however, the majority of metal open flute pipes that you'll come across will have what's called a tuning collar. With the flat side of your tuning knife against the pipe face, Gently tap the tuning collar upwards to make the pipe go flat and tap it down to make it go sharp. Another type of pipe that you'll find is the stopped wooden pipe where it basically has a stopper on the top and you grab the handle and move the stopper up or down, basically altering the tone in the same direction that the tuning collar does. 
If there's not a stopper, sometimes you'll find on metal pipes a cap or a felted cap on the top. That is basically tuned in the same way, following the same principles. Reeds can be different. There are a couple of different ways to tune reeds, on their top or on the wire, depending on their construction. Some have caps, some have tuning collars, some have scrolls. But if something is absolutely way out of whack, your best bet is to go with the wire. With the side of your tuning knife against the wire, tap to move the wire up or down, similarly to how you would treat the collar. So how do you know if something is in tune? In order to tune a pipe, you need a console assistant, or at least it would be really, really helpful to have a console assistant, someone to serve as a key holder. This person should ideally play the specific pipe in question with either the octave above or below, or with a common tuning rank, such as a four foot string or a principal. Now listen to the two pipes together, both the out of tune one and the one that you're tuning it to. This is when the concept of the beat frequency, or beats, comes in clutch. As you manipulate the pipe, you'll hear these audible beats start to speed up if it's going farther out of tune, or slow down when it's getting closer into tune. When the beats disappear, the pipe is in tune. Your technician will likely be happy to instruct and guide you on these basic tuning techniques, and reaching out to them before attempting any tuning is an extremely wise idea. If you look up at some of the pipework here, this is a mixture. This is the uh, great sharf in this organ. Um, you'll notice something relatively interesting. Um, sometimes you'll see instruments that have either scrolls or tuning collars on the tops of the pipes. But you'll see, for example, these don't, and some of the tops are kind of rounded off. This is what we call cone tuning. And cone tuning is a very, very um, detailed and skilled process where a person essentially takes a brass, well, cone, and molds the top of the pipe in order to shade it a little bit to make it flat or expand it out a little bit to make it sharp. Um, generally, again, cone tuning is a skill, uh, and doing it well takes a very long time to master, and cone tuning should not be attempted unless this is something that you have had very specific training in um, and are very, very comfortable doing. So. so this is just some very basic tuning and maintenance 101, and can hopefully help save some frustration in very last minute situations. In the next video, we'll detail more common preventative maintenance, organ chamber safety and etiquette, and a bit more on general communication and relationship building.